In this video, I'm going to be talking about anti-aliasing, which are those annoying jagged edges that you get while playing video games. So I'll be explaining what is anti-aliasing and explaining how anti-aliasing works in Krunker. Some of you might be familiar with AA and others not so much, but either way, I think that you're going to get something out of this video and I'll be giving you my recommendations on AA settings for the best results for whatever you're trying to achieve. Take a look at this clip right here. It's played on 0.1 resolution for a more dramatic effect. And if you see the straight lines, like on the shipping containers, uh, you don't see any errors. But when you look at the fence and all the diagonal lines, you can see that it's missing blocks, pieces of information. This is always going to be a problem because pixels are square. They're arranged like the surface of this Rubik's cube. Just imagine that this cube is a 3x3 pixel monitor. The white blocks are when the pixels are turned on. So I'll turn the cube to make a white line. And there's no aliasing, no errors. And then I can rearrange the cube like this to make a diagonal line. Now we still have a white line, but there's big gaps in between the white pixels. The way that anti-aliasing works is to sample the lines, um, surroundings, and average, and fill in the areas in between. But how does anti-aliasing work in Krunker? There's not actually a setting called anti-aliasing, but you can achieve the same thing using the resolution slider. In games with dedicated AA settings, um, sometimes they use different types of AA, and I won't go over all the details on the different types. But I do want to talk about super sampling, which renders the game at a higher resolution and then downscales it to the native resolution of your monitor. And this is what I believe is happening in Krunker when you increase the resolution slider past a value of one. This might seem obvious that it's simply a trade-off between frame rate and quality. If you're playing in a tournament, you're gonna wanna opt for higher frame rates, but maybe you're uploading videos for YouTube and you want the best quality possible. You don't wanna drop your resolution too low because visibility becomes an issue. I'll be testing the effects of resolution on anti-aliasing so you can make better decisions when it comes to your settings. Here's the first test and it's at full HD resolution with the res slider at 0.5. There's a lot of jagged edges pretty much everywhere including the gun model and it's really bad in that small barrier to the left of my crosshair. Full HD 1.0 resolution looks really really good from far away but as we zoom in you can see that there's aliasing at the same places that we saw last time. Very noticeable on the curves of the sniper. Full HD resolution 2.0 looks amazing. It's going to take a lot longer to see the effects of aliasing. You can kind of see it on the small barrier and the columns, but hardly noticeable on the player model or gun model. Now I'm going to manually enter a 4K resolution with a slider at 1. The image looks really sharp, but clearly you can see more aliasing than when I had it Full HD at a res of 2. Side by side, uh, Full HD res 2.0 looked slightly better. This either means that the res slider does something else other than just of uh, super sample or custom resolutions are not optimized. For now, I recommend sticking to your native resolution and using the resolution slider to make adjustments. So what about enemy player model visibility? The good news is that using a low res does not introduce too much aliasing since enemy player models don't have too many curves or diagonals. There's no issues at all with the player name tag and health bar. Now let's bump it up to res 1.0. Immediately, you do see a lot cleaner of an image. Not only does visibility of the player model matter, but also the surroundings. At Res 2.0, virtually no aliasing of any of the environment. Aliasing can cause a lot of visual clutter. So in theory, if it had no impact on your frame rates, Resolution 2.0 would be the best setting. I tested the effects of shadows on AA, and it did not impact AA, but created new edges that can be aliased. So in terms of aliasing, I suppose you could call it a little bit worse. Ambient shading, so that's the gradient effect to simulate lighting, did not have any impact on aliasing, did not introduce any new aliasing. It does shift the aliased edge of something, but since it fades into a gradient, for some people, it may actually reduce the appearance of aliasing. I will be giving you guys a few different recommended settings, but uh, I do suggest that you test it out yourself. Everyone's PC and display is different, so that's why you should test. The way that you do that is simply by adjusting the resolution slider up or down. Examine the diagonal lines and the curved lines in detail. Also try to take a quick glance at the monitor to determine if it's going to impact your target acquisition ability. Here are some of my recommended settings to help you balance frame rates versus overall graphics quality and aliasing. If you're on a low end device, the first thing you wanna do is adjust your resolution until you get a frame rate that you're comfortable playing with but I did find the 0.5 res setting to be really good for laptops with integrated graphics. And aliasing is also less of a factor if you're using a laptop with a smaller screen. If you're playing the game competitively, I would say that resolution of 0.9 to 1.1 is gonna give you the best balance of frame rates and anti-aliasing. These types of players usually have a bit better hardware than the average user, but 
just to get your frame rates up to a good level, I usually like to hit 500 and after that prioritize anti-aliasing. If you're someone like me who does care about competitive advantage but also makes videos, if your PC can handle it, I highly recommend a resolution of 1.2 to 1.4 and this is what I typically use. The anti-aliasing from the super sampling definitely makes for a sharper image, a little bit less distractions. If you're a crunker filmmaker, assuming that you're getting above 60 FPS, I see no reason why you shouldn't use a resolution of 2. Video for YouTube is uploaded at 60 FPS anyways, and if you're making a movie, then you don't need to play to win. So when I'm making my own videos, when I'm shooting B-roll for certain parts, I do like to switch over to 2.0 resolution and disable the UI for that cinematic look. So here's a few closing thoughts. So I made this video because not everyone knows about how anti-aliasing works in Krunker via changing the resolution scale. Also, frame rates are of course super important in Krunker, but um, if you wanna get the highest quality video, um, so especially if you're uploading to YouTube and you're using editing software and you're making a bunch of cuts and renders, it always helps to have great quality game footage because if you have aliasing, you can't really get rid of that in post-production. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you want me to do more performance testing in the future. Thanks to anyone who's ever subscribed, viewed, or commented on my videos. This has been Feels Good Man.